It's another week and it's pleasure coming your way this Monday. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amano and this is the Midday Brief. Coming up finally, Dr. Mensa Otabel speaks about his purported tape of his comments on free education, calling on the president to act. Now we will find out the impact his speech has made or will make on the whole debate already in the public domain. Now the Melcom Disaster Rescue Team is rounding up its mission today and we will do some analysis of this mission. Stay with me for details and more over the next 30 minutes. So in our first story, Dr. Mensah Otabel has finally broken silence on allegations that he has taken a stand on the education debates ongoing in the political arena. He says the attempt to make him look as though he has taken a stand for any political party. He concluded by calling on the pre president, John Mahama, to act because perpetrators of the act are largely part of his team. I am a pastor. I am not a politician. I am not standing for any political office. I am not a member of any political party. This year, 2012, I have been drafted again. My voice and sermons have been sampled, spliced, and manipulated to appear to take a political position on a very heated political issue. I have also been made to appear as taking a stand against one political group or the other. When let me state clearly that the sound bites that have been played with my voice have been taken totally out of context. In some cases, phrases from different messages I have preached over the years with no relationship to one another have been mischievously pieced together to create the impression that I was making a current contribution on the ongoing political debate. This is defamatory. It is unethical. It is criminal. It is malicious. It is Machiavellian. It is a violation of my person and my integrity. It is no one and I repeat, no one has the right to force their thoughts into my words. I own my thoughts, I own my words, and I own my beliefs. I call upon the President of the Republic to rise up and speak on this issue. With all due respect, sir, although you may not be aware of these developments, the perpetrators of these blatant acts of impunity are largely affiliates and surrogates of your party. Today, I come as a simple pastor. I do not have the machinery of state behind me. I do not have a police force or military detachment to defend me. I do not have serial callers or a media machinery to spin my story. All I have is the God whom I've served over the years. He is my strength. Right, so for those of you who have never heard what uh, Dr. Menza Otabel is purported to have said, uh, let's take a listen. I was talking to a politician, and they were talking about fee-free education. Nobody should pay fees. When we come to power, nobody will pay fees. And I'm sure when you hear all that you are happy, nobody will pay fees, fee-free. Education can never be free. Somebody is paying for it. Tell me who is paying for it. See, when they come to you and say things like fee free education, you are happy, take your children to school. Say, oh, they don't pay fees. The government is good, we don't pay fees. You know why you think you don't pay fees? It's because you can't even understand what is going into that because you see nothing is free 
You are paying for it. Only you are being told you didn't pay. How do you pay for it? Through taxation. Who pays the taxes? Me. So I pay tax and you tell me you've given me free education when it's my taxes that paid for it. So don't tell me any free free education. The other thing too is somebody, if somebody tells you anything is free, ask them what's the quality. Because if you don't know the quality, don't take it free. If somebody tells you something is free, ask them what control do I have on it? Because you see, if you think that it's free, even when it's bad, you can't complain. I said to the person, I don't want fee-free education. I don't believe in it. I said, pay me well my due and let me have the joy of paying my own child's school fees so that my child is not a property of the state. He's my own child and I have the dignity of a father. So Dr. Mensah Otabo has said, should he talk about his stand on education, we would realize that it is not in sync with any of the political parties at the moment. So will this press conference uh, bring to rest uh, the issue of Pastor Mensa Otabel purported to have commented on, on free education. And so to help us discuss uh, this matter is Dr. Clementa Park. He is convener for the Forum of uh, Justice and Governance. Hello, Dr. Park. Hello, thank you for having me on your uh, program. My group is the Forum for Governance and Justice. Right. Uh, th thanks for the correction. But do you think the statement by Dr. D don't you think it's, it's long overdue? Um, can you repeat the question, please? I, well, I well I'm, asking, I'm asking his statement at the moment. Is, isn't it long overdue? Well, I, um, if you want my honest opinion, I, I think that uh, his uh, press conference actually raises uh, a lot more questions than uh, it professes uh, answers um, for, for several reasons. Uh, one, um, the fact is that he would have done uh, a lot more justice to the issue um, if he had stated his position very clearly on the two issues that uh, have sought to draw him as he himself has noted into the realm of politics. Um, regardless of the context of the comments that are attributed to him in the tapes that have become public, uh, whether or not those tapes have been doctored, the fact that remains that uh, he made comments to the effect that free, free education was not possible. Is it the case that he believes that it is still not possible, or has he rescinded his decision on, uh, on that? Uh, and two, that he still believe that all that we die is an attitude that has a heart of breeding bad, bad uh, tendencies and habits in, in our society. Um, I also feel that uh, it is uh, rather interesting that he has decided to call on the president to intervene based on his uh, conclusion that those who are responsible for putting this information in the public domain are largely drawn uh, for, from the president's uh, party. Does he know who they are? And if so, why has he not stated that publicly? Has he already submitted a petition to the president? Um, if that is the case, uh, why was it that he did not do similar when in the 2008, in the run-up to the 2008 elections, uh, when his name came up as somebody who was on a so-called hit list? He did not act similarly, and he did not ask the president at the time uh, to intervene or to come public to help uh, put that issue to rest. This press conference could have done him more good than, uh, more harm than good. Well, if you want my honest opinion, I definitely think that this press conference has raised a lot more questions uh, because the issues uh, are still quite relevant. Uh, the, 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 the fact is that um, he may have any reason to complain 
he's a citizen like all of us. Uh, he may feel aggrieved that he's, he's being misrepresented, that his pronouncements may have been taken out of context. But the comments that have been attributed to him, doctored or not, have some resonance and have relevance to the present political discourse. The issue and the question is this. Does he still believe in fee-free education or does he not? Does he condone the habit or the attitude of all that we die or not? These are fundamental questions that are timeless and cannot simply be forgotten or dismissed uh, on the basis of the press conference that he held. So I think that he would have better, uh, he would have been better off by stating his positions on the very issues that some are using as a basis uh, to project him as taking particular positions either in support or against particular political entities. And I really do not feel that the press conference has put those issues to rest. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Clementa Park. He is a uh, convener for the Forum for Governance and Justice. You're watching the Midday Brief. I'll be right back. Welcome back. And now rescue efforts at the collapsed Melcom building at Achimota have formally ended while police investigations continue. The five-day rescue exercise, which began last Wednesday, ended with a total of 81 persons rescued under the debris. Out of the 81, 10 were already dead at the time of rescue, while four died later at the hospital, and some 51 have been treated and discharged. The people were trapped under the wreckage when the Malcolm building at Achimota Neoplan collapsed. And so we have been joined in the studio by Nana Anu Ami here, a safety expert to do a post-mortem of the rescue mission. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Nana. You're welcome. But uh, really, give me your candid opinion on the entire rescue process that, that went down over last week. Well, under the circumstances, we must congratulate mm. and commend the emergency services for doing their best mm -hmm. to rescue really? the situation. So kudos to them for the, the, the job that they've done to save um, um, uh, precious lives. Right, but people have raised issues as to the speed of work, the machinery, the fact that we, we, if you read the interim report, you realize that a lot of these emergency workers were not trained in some of the tools that were there. Do people have valid concerns when they raise some of these issues yes as a people really i always say that safety is denigrated to the back burner we to really have safety you must prepare for safety and we are really as a, as a country we have not put enough resources into safety so that's why i said earlier under the circumstances the emergency services did their very best but if you're really looking forward we must put resources into the emergency services so that such eventuality happening will be able to tackle it uh, speedily and appropriately. Pointing out critical areas, what must we do to prepare ourselves for uh, issues or, or situations of, of this magnitude and, and probably worse? In emergency preparedness, we have pre-event, we have the event, and we have post-event. All those three must be managed appropriately and properly, and properly resourced. Mm. If you don't, then you'll be caught uh, unawares, and the result will be a lot of unnecessary deaths. I mean, the, the Israelis came in, and what did we see? The dogs that you saw that the Israelis uh, so brought in, mm. are there any exotic trained? dogs? Some of these dogs, mm. did you so see the dogs? have done the I, job. I, I did see that them. These yeah, those dogs, are the dogs that who, we which see are local breed, oh. were brought in all the way from Israel, mm. To come, and, to come and help the situation. So this is all part of the preparedness that as a nation, we have not put in enough resources to, um, as it were, uh, uh, look after our well-being. So this is 
as I said earlier, to be able to foresaw some of these things, you must be prepared at all times. The pre-event, the event, and the post-event. So now that that has settled, what measures, control measures, are we going to put in place so that such things, when it do, does happen, then, then we will have the, the capacity to be able to tackle the, the situation effectively and uh, uh, soundly so that you don't have a, a lot of fatalities. You know, a lot of times when we've talked about safety of a building, we've, we've, we've thought of fire. Yes. As, 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 as the biggest deal, but yes. here we are and we have a pancake collapse of a six-story building. Yes. Going forward, what should uh, builders especially um, put in place so that we, we what, what safety measures really should they put in place so that we don't have situations uh, as, as, as these? We highlighted the, the some of these things, have, the, the most important of. ones, uh, road safety, Road safety is killing over 2,500 Ghanaians uh, every year, irrespective of whether you are a, a, a news reporter, whether you're a doctor, mm -hmm. whether you're a minister or a president's son or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's killing 2,500 Ghanaians, dissipating our human resource. Now, fire safety. When I go to most buildings, I mean, I wonder, we, we have, they have fire certificate. But when you look that this building has been certified for fire, and you go in there and you ask where are your egress points mm. and where are the illumination that will tell you that this, uh, in the event of a fire outbreak, you this is where you should go and all those. The, the induction that you give to people who visit your building is not non-existent. So if we uh, behave like uh, the proverbial kokosachi in Ghanaian palace, that he will only build his house when it rains, then we are going to be caught on our ways at all times. Mm. So the way forward is to make sure that all the rules and regulations on safety are followed to the letter. It's not for want of not having them. We have all of them. If you go to the assembly, I mean the, the district assembly, right. they have all these uh, building regulations and codes and whatever no. that have to be followed let, at all times. Let me just um, cut in here. I'm, I am very sorry for that, but how do we ensure that this business code, this um, safety codes, the, the building codes are adhered to? It's enforcement. And we, Safety Ghana, we are really going to go and assist the AMA or whoever that calls uh, 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 for, for, for our assistance mm. to put technical experts at their disposal to make sure that all the, the th uh, buildings, public buildings are over and above three stories are properly audited technically to find right. out their structural integrity right. and put the right measures in place. Mm so that right. this uh, calamity will not happen again. Uh, thank you very much, Nana. We've been speaking to Nana Anu Ame here. He's been giving us a postmortem of the rescue mission on the Achimota Malcolm building collapse. He is a safety expert. Now, earlier we brought you uh, excerpts from uh, Pastor Men Dr. Menza Otabel's uh, press conference where, again, he denied allegations of having uh, commented on uh, free education, which seems to be the most topical issue in, in, in uh, this political season. Now, on the, on the telephone line again, to help digest the issues, Abu Jinapo of the NPP. Now, the NPP issued a press statement after this purported uh, tape had leaked. And so, good afternoon, Abu. Good afternoon, madam, and good afternoon to your cherished viewers. Absolutely. And now there is a press conference. Dr. Mesa Otabel himself has spoken. What do you, as the NPP, make of this? Well, we have been very consistent on the message that we are delivering to the Ghanaian people. We have said time and again that free secondary education is an imperative for the socio-economic development of our country. And we have been very consistent about that. We have a means work on it. Uh, then you see, half on the now turned out dubious record or dubious tape of the respected Pastor Mensa Utabel. Um, it turned out from Pastor Mensa Utabel's own account that this whole so called tape was a concocted one. I believe in politics, credibility is very important. And if you have a political party and the government that keeps suffering credibility setback, um, it doesn't augur well for you. And we just feel happy and excited, but that increasingly our position on this uh, much debated 
political or campaign issue for the 2012 election have been consistent and have been credible. We have never wavered. And this press conference by Pastor Mesa Utebel only goes to give an impetus to the position that we have adopted since. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Abu. Abu Jinapo is with the NPP. And uh, with that, we introduce uh, Mitte Wellness. Right. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us on the midday brief. Uh, moving on to wellness segment. Well, habits such as uh, thumb sucking, nose picking, and nail biting are disorders that are developed during childhood. Now, for many, as they grow up, these habit disorders can be outgrown with the help of others and sometimes through one's own will. But there are a few who, however, seem to keep such habits even during their adult years. And one such common habit is nail biting. According to statistics, nail biting is fairly common in children and adolescents. Even even though it has no long-term implications, the habit isn't completely without risk as it ranges from health effects to psychological effects as well. Nail biting is a common habit that affects people of any age. It is a bad habit which may result due to a number of different factors such as stress, depression, anxiety and other emotional problems. Some people may not even be aware that they have developed the habit of nail biting because they bite their nails unconsciously. Although commonly overlooked, as the habit has mild effects, it does also come along with some psychological effects on the person. As one would always want to hide his hands to prevent others from seeing their short ragged nails and continually make sure that their hands are hidden. Nail biting not only ruins the beauty and appearance of the nails, but also exposes the biter to several health risks. The habit can damage the cuticles and leave the fingers prone to fungal infections. Warts can be disfiguring, embarrassing, and sometimes itch or hurt. Some medical professionals have even suggested the act may sometimes lead to dental problems by exerting pressure on teeth roots. Nail biters are often the first to catch flu or cold as biting nails constantly aids the transfer of germs from hand to mouth. If you think that chewing your nails is no problem, the idea that it could be a gateway to various ailments may be enough to have you give up the bad habit for good. Yeah, welcome back. And in business brief, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana will today begin its meetings to review developments in the economy. This week's meeting, which is the 53rd meeting, will end with a decision on the appropriate positioning of the bank's policy rate. The policy rate is usually indicative of the rate commercial banks can borrow from the central bank. The monetary policy, among other things, attempts to control interest rates to influence outcomes like economic growth, inflation, exchange rates, among others. Also high on the committee's meeting will be the discussion on the city's performance against major currencies, especially the dollar, as well as uh, the high interest rates on commercial banks in the country. The committee is expected to announce its decision on Wednesday on whether to maintain the policy at 15% or increase it, or maybe otherwise. Time now for some international news.